Thank you, everyone, for the brief break. Um, so we're going to hand it over now to uh, yeah, Disc Golf Association to Jared Madsen. So all yours, Jared. Uh, thank you. Hello there. My name is Jared Madsen. I'm the president of the Hinton Disc Golf Association. I'm going to give you a little snapshot of what we've gone through uh, this year and what our goals are for the future. So really what we're trying to do is we want to continually grow disc golf as a sport in in Hinton and the community. It's a it's very accessible, a very inexpensive activity that's appropriate for a, a very, very diverse clientele. People of all ages enjoy disc golf and it's a, it's a really great way to get outside, you know? So we've had a couple of successes over the last over the last 12 months. Um, I can say that we've seen our course uh, get used by multiple local groups in town for team building activities. We've had several groups over the summer, including uh, Discovery Camp, Kids kids Clubs. I've taken many groups out on, on tours there, and it's uh, we've seen like an increase in the volume of traffic that we get at the course. Because I'm there every day, and sometimes I have to wait to throw. So it's, it's, a lot, it's getting a lot of ease. Uh, some of the things we did this year were we tried to improve our walking trails one between holes. So we spent a lot of time uh, covering the trails with mulch to make it better accessible for, well, for anybody, people with strollers, people with carts, and just a little easier on the knees. And if you're, if you're like me and if you run out of breath every 300 feet, we put a new bench at every tee box. So you can throw a hole, take a break, throw up another hole and take a break. So we're just kind of improving the accessibility of the course. Uh, one of the, of the highlights of the Hinton Disc Golf Association on the course we have in town is that we've got our Wicked Woods Tournament. This year was our third annual Wicked Woods, and it was once again very highly received, where we had professional and amateur players from across Alberta and British Columbia. Some of them traveled from Vancouver, Grand Prairie, Edmonton, and several local players as well. Um, this generated a lot of sponsorship from local businesses to get uh, for prizes, packages, and prize support. And the feedback we get from our tournaments is overwhelmingly positive, as they know that our course is a very challenging, very challenging but well built and well designed, well designed course. And I just wanted to put out a big thank you to uh, our members Tracy St. Jean and Charles Gobiel. They were instrumental on putting such a great uh, on a great tournament and making and making the Hinton Disc Golf Association look really, really good. Uh, we also have continued to run our league night. This has been our third league, and we get uh, it runs from April 28th to September 7th. It's a 20 week league that we run, and we get uh, roughly 20 to 25 players signed up of all different levels that meet weekly. And just it's a great way for people to meet new up, meet new people, to improve your game, to improve your skills, and just uh, a very affordable, affordable way to have a kind of get out there. But legally cost twenty five dollars to join, so it's a it's really affordable for people. And we're hoping for next year that to look at uh, some more league sponsors from from businesses to maybe increase our prize pool and encourage more people to sign up. Our course rating it gets of course is a uh, all disc golf courses get rated online by the players. They can evaluate it. Our course rating has actually increased from last year from a four point five to a four point six out of five. So we are actually, we have one of the top rated courses in all of Western Canada, and it's all essentially entirely volunteer run. So we're really, really proud of what we've been able to do there. And I think our, our rating and our high reputation reflects that. So some of the challenges that we've got, I think are many of the same challenges that a lot of volunteer organizations have. And it's just all these nonprofits, like we struggle to get a lot of volunteers. So the course itself is it's in the woods. It you know it involves clearing trees. It involves clearing brush, uh, raking, shoveling, all those sorts of things. It's a lot of manual labor that's done by a very small amount of people. And so our challenge is always trying to find ways to uh, to increase our volunteer base to help maintain the course. So we had our our budget of last sort of last year's operating budget. 
Um, a snapshot of this is kind of what I want to sort of draw your attention to. Okay, is that better? Okay, do I wait? That's okay, we have it here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, do I project loud? <laughs> okay, just a little snapshot with our uh, of our budget. Our operating expenses are pretty, uh, they're free. Pretty basic. We have to cover insurance for the course. We've got some administration fees that need to be covered. And mainly the majority of the, of the funds that we get from our operating budget from the town go towards our insurance and course maintenance. We have money to cover our insurance and we were able to cut the grass, have a company cut out, come out with a big skid steer and a big mower, it's a lot to do. Uh, and they'll cut the grass and help us maintain the course. We've also got some expenses that include marketing and league expenses and payouts for that. So our total operating expenses for this year were $6,302.44. Um, our operating, what we get for our operating budget from the town is $5,150.30. So we burned through all that and the remainder of our funds come from memberships that we get from the community and we get a couple of we have businesses to help sponsor the course as well. Um, so really where we are right now is just we would like to maintain our current town agreement, what we've got. Um, I think at, right now it's working pretty well for us and we're still kind of sort of in our growing phases. So with what we have right now, I think we're able to, we're able to maintain the course to a satisfactory level. Um, yeah, we do get lots of sponsorships and grants from local businesses that accounts for a lot of our funding. And we sell sponsorships um, for $500, which are on a three year cycle. So a business can sponsor a, a bench on one of the holes and we'll put one of their signs there and that'll be up to three years or they can have their sticker on a basket and they get to choose what it is. And so using all of the, using sponsorships and grants, we were able to purchase a C-CAN to help us store some of our equipment. So, that was done using community grant funds. And some plans we've got for the future is we're still looking for more volunteers. We just keep wanting to expand as much as we can while still being able to maintain what we've got. We would like to be able to expand to accommodate another nine baskets or another nine holes on the course. It would be nice. We were looking into potentially getting a bathroom installed in the parking lot. Because the, the location of the course is right across from the, the bike park. The nearest washroom is at the bike park, and it's kind of the equivalent to needing to go to the washroom in McDonald's, but having to go to Canadian Tire to do so. So it's a bit of a walk. So we're looking into that, and we hopefully want to replace our wooden tee boxes with concrete. So we'll look for some sponsorships to help us with that. And so I gotta welcome any questions and feedback. Excellent. Thank you, Jared. Council, questions for. Hinton Golf, Hinton Golf, Disc Golf Association. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Jared, I like what you do for the town and your group does for the town. The bang for the buck uh, is, is pretty good. That amount, uh, 5,100, does that cover operating and capital that we give you? Uh, no, we've got another, we've got another amount of capital set aside. I think it's another, it's like another $5,000 for capital budget as well. The $5,150 and 30, $5,150 and 30 cents is just our operating budget. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, what, what do you guys bring to our community and the amount of volunteers, you know, and I've also seen a name quite uh, often out there, but Tracy St. John, I guess, competes in various different uh, tournaments as well and does very well for our community so that's great um i guess just a quick question is because it is growing popular and you have one league night as as the board ever entertain doing other league nights similar to other golf say golf courses but having industrial league or having women's night and things having separate leagues to pull in possibly more revenue potentially um, where maybe they don't want to be part of that league on that night, but another night might be. Has, has the board ever considered that to to look at more revenue streams 
potentially? I think we we're focused on running one league successfully. It's still pretty new. It's only three years old. Mm -hmm. So once we've demonstrated that we can run one league very successfully, then it would expand more. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also does take another volunteer to run that. So no one's getting no one's getting paid. <laughs> so no, it's entirely voluntary. And I guess that's where I'm because incentivizing people to volunteer is tough. I know that in Absolutely. a lot of organizations, you know. And I guess maybe that's where potentially having more revenue might be able to give you some other options for incentivizing. I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's a, because it is such a growing sport, you know, and we're seeing more and more people both in the community, outside of the community, you know, it's right up there with pickleball getting more and more too, right? So yeah, yeah. potential there to have a, a youth league or a, a doubles league or a mixed league. There's all sorts of opportunity there. For sure. So just to expand on that, do you also like have strategic plan? Like if we, if you were to see as a group, what is strategically you're looking at next five, 10 years, potentially uh, how that will look. And I know I saw some things here. You want nine uh, more baskets. You want concrete, but is that ever entertained at your group's level? Yes, but kind of on a preliminary level. Okay. It's hasn't been delved in too deeply quite yet. We had a little bit of a changeover of our executive over the last year. So several of our new executive members just joined up over the last couple of months. So we're still kind of getting our feet under us and are seeing if we're all on the same page there. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Jared. Uh, Councilor Reese. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jared, thank you so much for your presentation. First question, um, do you apply to the community grant process for any monies to assist you in your wants? Yes, the, the, the association has applied for that in the past. And I believe that was one way that we got our kiosk at the course. And our, I believe we got our CCAN through that as well. So it has been used and uh, the, we'll look forward for future projects as well. And just one more brief comment. Jarrett, my uh, daughter and her husband from BC, they play courses all over Canada and you're selling yourself short. She said it's the best one she's ever been on. So um, she'd give you a five out of five. Thank oh, you, I sir. Thank you. So, okay, council, any more questions for the association? Okay, thank you very much, Jared, for coming and presenting. Um, and look forward to next year. Awesome. And I'm good to see you. Much. You're welcome. Okay, hey, everybody. So we have one more uh, delegation here, Wild Mountain Music Festival. Um, there it comes. So just wait on Rob to get the Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hello. Hello. Where would you like us? Right in the front. Here. In the front. Yes. Is this chair here for you? Absolutely, this is fine. We'll, we'll carry the circle. Okay. Excellent. So neither one of you are Rob, so if you could just go ahead and please introduce yourself for the Wild Mountain Music Festival. Uh, my name is Barb Marchin, and I am the vice chair of Wild Mountain Music Society and involved in many things with the music festival. And my name is Harry Arneson, and I also am uh, part of Wild Mountain Music Festival. I'm a director, and uh, I my general area of responsibility is the instruments. Okay. All right. So I'll hand it over to you to present uh, sure. the Wild Mountain Music. We are uh, we're filling in for Rob, who has been doing this for a bit, um, and so we're kind of got called in at the last minute. So. Uh, bear with me as we try to follow, follow through this. Um, so one of the questions, we're kind of going through the questions that were sent to us, and we're just going to kind of wrap around that. Um, our purpose for the festival, obviously, is to bring music to Hinton, but um, music festivals and the arts in general, and Harry can speak to this as well, are important community builders. Um, and we look at it as something that is is for our community of Hinton. Um, it's, it's very much funded by the community of Hinton through our in-kind and our uh, sponsorship donations. Um, and I think it really brings our community together. I sometimes sort of joke that we just put on a party for ourselves. And in a way, that's kind of what happens because we just, we enjoy, you know, putting it together. Uh, we get a lot of volunteers. We get a lot of people from Hinton that come out and spend, you know, a couple of weeks out there getting everything ready and, and setting it up. So I think it's more than just a music festival. I think it's a community event. 
uh, in terms of our purpose. Um, some of our successes. So when um, I joined the board, and I think right about the same time, correct me if I'm wrong, um, one of the things that we felt we needed to work on was really putting together a framework for this, the festival, um, setting up a legacy, if you will, that uh, if you know, something happened to the, the people that were on the board that other people could step in and kind of follow what we had set up. And that's something that we've really been working on over the last four years is kind of how we set up our site, how, who does what, what jobs go to which person. So we've got a really good framework at this point that our, as a result, our festival is very well run. Um, we've been to other festivals, some of our board members have been to other festivals that were a little more chaotic in their organization. So we've really tried to work hard to minimize that and to have things really set up well. So that's been a definite success. I would also suggest that uh, one of our successes is the number of volunteers, the number of sponsorship, and the number of in-kind donations that we get from the town of Hinton itself um, really speaks to the amount that uh, the town supports us and the business people in our town appreciate us. Um, some of our issues this year um, are reefer. So reefer is our cold storage for um, cakes and other ice and things like that. Um, it, I think it's quite old. Yeah, it's it, for all intents and purposes has failed. So we need to to source something different for uh, refrigeration. So yeah, it's, it was old, old and it's uh, decided that was its last festival. Um, we also, getting generators and getting the necessary you know, sort of generator and power infrastructure that we need out there is sometimes a challenge depending on um, who, uh, what businesses are in town and what they have available and things like that. Um, the one that we got last year, the big one that we used for all our music has, uh, that company has actually left Hinton or will be leaving Hinton in October is my understanding. Um, so we will be looking for someone else to replace that. So getting power out there and building our infrastructure can be a challenge. Um, so far, knock wood, last few years have had really good weather. That's always, it can always be a challenge for us mm -hmm. as well. Um, and looking at sort of an overview of our financial from the last year. So roughly with our um, revenue, we've brought in 273,901.85. Um, that does not include our in-kind. It does include our sponsorship. So from within the town itself, we managed to come up with, uh, sorry, $55,270 in donations. And we um, had our in-kind were 71,390. So basically in-kind are things when they lend us a double lender, lend us a generator, right? Those are all expenses that we would have had, um, which puts us in about $343,000 was our total uh, revenue. We uh, did sell $133,911 worth of tickets. We also give tickets for the sponsorship. So depending on the allowed amount of money that you sponsor, um, you get a certain number of tickets. So many, I think we were about 200 where tickets were, Watch is that uh, about 200 were given to the people that sponsored us so that's kind of how we kind of work things um and then we are a, a completely 100 percent volunteer run um and so we do kind of do some computing of those kinds of things in terms of revenue as well and what that looks like for us so we had uh, just under 200 volunteers um for people that are just coming to the festival that looks like 12 hours of volunteer time if they come before it's a little bit more for us, people that are on the board, it's anywhere from, I think I'm up about 400 hours. Uh, I know Rob is up there probably over 500 hours. Like there's there's some board members that put in, and some volunteers, some, some coordinators that put in a lot of time. So I consider that a revenue as well. Um, our expenses in the last year were $247,700, sorry, $247,705. 265. Oh, 265. Oh, yeah, sorry, expenses 265. Um, and so we are left at the end of it with nine thousand, sorry, $9,259.83 is what our um, surplus would be at the end of everything. Um, and our proposed uh, for 2024, we're looking between 340000 and 350000 for our operating budget. That would include approximately 130,000 for vans alone. Um, they are obviously the largest expense. Um, fuel is up there uh, for running load generators. Um, the sound, the, the production sound that we get uh, from, it's a place in, in the city. We don't have anything in Hinton that offer that. That's like in the $25,000 range. 
So those are sort of some of our bigger expenses that we have. Um, and so our anticipated budget would be somewhere in that same area. We do try to book, uh, and I would say out of the 21 vans we had last year, I was trying to do a count, I think we had 17 that were from Alberta, directly from Alberta. Um, and we had one from Montreal, another one from Ontario, a group from Manitoba. So we are bringing in Canadian and really supporting the Canadian music scene and specifically the Alberta music scene. Would you say? Yes. Okay. Um, and basically what we're looking for from the town is $6,500 plus the use of the stage for three years. And so that would be the town stage that you have and the equipment that goes with that. I think there's some risers that uh, are addition to that and the sound system that goes with that stage. It's kind of all the package. That really that's it that's it okay council any questions for uh wild music festival Councilor taylor three three questions one simple how much did we give you last year how much did we make the year before no no this year this year how much did we give you last year from the town 20, yeah. yeah 20, hang on a second. Um, Grant, uh, you five thousand three hundred and sorry, five thousand two hundred and thirty eight dollars and forty cents, and you held back uh, one thousand three hundred and nine and sixty cents. So we haven't received the whole amount. Was that correct? Sixty five. So sixty five hundred. So that was from the community grant program. Yes. Okay. So we sold. Okay. Councilor Taylor. Yeah, what's the economic benefit to Hinton and how many out of town guests do you bring in? Uh, okay, so um, we we estimate that we are bringing in about a million dollars worth of revenue to the, to the hotel, to restaurants, to um, uh, grocery stores, to liquor stores uh, coming into the town. Um, we did a survey last year and kind of tried to find out who was coming in from out of town. Um, and we're estimating about 30% of our people come from out of town. A lot of people from Hinton support the festival directly. Um, but uh, we found that, yeah, that's that's kind of our estimate. And that includes like the amount of money that we personally, like our bands, because we do put up uh, people in the hotels in our town. Uh, and I can tell you that that's one of the expenses that's listed on my list here. Okay, so you see here, we're in about that. Just what eighteen thousand? Eighteen thousand, just for our own band, the band people that come in, we have to book rooms for them. Um, and then on our survey, we asked like how much money they estimated they had spent, and we kind of made a guesstimate from that. Okay. That was thirty percent of how many people? I'm sorry. Uh, what were we at? Which was our total? Um, uh, close to a thousand. Yeah, about a thousand. So. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stashik. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We'll follow up to Councillor Taylor's question of 6,500 from the community grant program. But was there not also some contribution from the council's contingency fund that went to Wild Mountain Music Festival? Mr. Chairman, the administration, thank you. The year before, there was funding from the council contingency, I believe. In 2023, however, there was not, and the uh, festival did pay for the stage this year. They were funded 6300 Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So also to follow up, and then Councillor Taylor, um, so what you are asking for of council this year is to have a budgeted item for uh, for for the Wild Music Festival at the 6500 right. And the stage for three year in, the, in an agreement. Okay. Yes. So is is administration prepared to bring that to our twenty twenty four budget discussions? I'll refer to Mr. Duke. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, the rest of uh, committee. Yes, that's the plan that we've got uh, uh, forming up now with budget. Okay. And if I can follow up there, also, I'm assuming going through the civic agency policy and that they fit and and potentially look at, you know, future years like other city agencies? Through the chair to the rest of the committee, exactly that. So the 
earlier in the year, we did receive the, some of the financial statements and other requirements for meeting the specific agency uh, policy. Yeah. Okay. The partnership policy. Excellent. Okay. One more comment on that as well. I mean, uh, it, the town of Hinton would also then uh, really rightfully earn our, our gratitude. One of the things that happened last year is we were contacted to provide tents for the, uh, the candidates in celebration. That's certainly an area where we could cooperate, we could provide that. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea that our tents and that sort of infrastructure be made available for any uh, any uh, town of Hinton uh, ventures would certainly be something that we would, would be willing to offer. So it's, you know, and uh, we, we also offered, we have these lovely pallet bars that uh, we also supplied for the uh, Canada celebration and, and uh, a number of tables. And, and uh, so, and, and we'd be more than happy that, to make our, those sorts of things available for, for, for the community as well. I mean, we do see ourselves as a part of the community and, and, uh, and, uh, and ways in which we as a volunteer organization could assist uh, in just the enhancement of the community is, is sort of something that we're, we're alive to and, and willing to participate in. Uh, there is one more thing that, I mean, it, when we talk about, uh, just to back up a little, it, just in addition to some of the bar said, uh, we, uh, we do look to encourage uh, uh, the arts in a variety of ways. Our, our select venue is, is music, but uh, we have the School of Rock for example, last year they were invited to perform on this is Sunday morning, uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. morning, and so we had uh, my goodness, uh, six. There seven bands between Harry Collins and mm -hmm. uh, Gerard Redman, um, and probably one of, I didn't count how many kids, but most bands had before, so it was it was, and we allowed the parents to come in for free. We also offered if they wanted to come and stay for the day, we offered them a discount and. Ticket price uh, to try to encourage them to stay and stay with their kids, and some of them took us up on that. So it became an opportunity for children to explore uh, their artistic side. They've been learning to play musical instruments, and, and we provided provided a venue for them. Uh, it was really exciting for them, and and uh, and it was just a lot of fun for everyone to watch that and, and to enjoy that. I uh, know when uh, when. Uh, Brian LaBerge was, was uh, our president as well. He organized a number of competitions where people could, uh, could uh, different bands could take part and they were able to uh, secure a, an opportunity to, to open a, a band. They got some time in a, in a uh, recording studio thing. So it was, again, an opportunity where we can to create for uh, for I mean, up and coming musicians, a, a bit of an op an opening, an opportunity for them to uh, to buy their trade and to to enhance their their skills and so on. So just to encourage you know the arts community overall. Again, our venue is primarily music, so but it, it's an important part of what we do as well. It's just we we're not it, it's it serves more than just to. And the, the immediate best. Excellent. Thank you, sir. So. And to add to that, I would say too that like the school of rock gives them gives the kids a chance to play on a professional stage with professional sound engineers, which is, I mean, as much as we offer them at, at our schools, and I'm from one of the schools, uh, it's 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 the next level up. Um, we also have in the past uh, last year we donated tickets to Bridges, who did a raffle and made thirteen hundred dollars for their for their program. Um, when Edson was evacuated, we provided our porta potty down at the uh, at the Mary Reimer. So we and we were ready to to bring whatever was needed during that time. So I say that there's some other things that we definitely offered the town. Excellent, thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, I'm just trying to understand what the total ask is because we council contingency or something gets billed for the stage, right? How much is that? The actual rental cost at the stage is that that's to administration. If we give out the stage, somebody has to pay for it. I think it's council's uh, contingency budget that pays for it. So what's the cost of that? Uh, thank you, Chair, through to Councillor Taylor. 
<clears throat> excuse me, the cost for the snowmobile, which does include a, sh a stage, but does not include extensions to the stage. Um, and sometimes sound packages, depending on what you need, are additional. But we're looking at, you know, 600 to 800-ish dollars in that neighborhood. Okay, thank you. So if I may follow up with that comment, is it administration's intent, uh, because generally <laughs> asks do come from the contingency fund. However, this is a uh, potentially a possible budgeted amount that wouldn't come from that. Is that is that the intent of uh, administration when bringing bringing this forward? Uh, thank you. I I would say that the best way to deal with this is to actually discuss it at budget, at budget. Okay. And, and the various options and and get council's direction at that time. So if I may, just to make a comment, I I think for me, uh, uh, I see this as a separate than uh, than our one off. Uh, asks that we get in the community that it would be an addition. So it would be the 6,500 plus whatever amount for it personally, because I see that that contingency could be uh, definitely drained quite quickly. Then. So, okay. All right, uh, Councillor Taylor. Just a quick question uh, to the presenters. If, if we give you a significant portion of what uh, you're asking for, uh, what would happen to the tents that you would give us for Canada Day? Would that be complimentary or would you charge for those? Well, we've asked for 6,500 plus uh, a little goodwill in, in the nature of the uh, of the, uh, the use of the showmobile. Uh, I dare say that uh, if you come anywhere near that amount, uh, you will have secured our goodwill. Uh, which means that our tents would be made available uh, at no charge. It kind of, and that comes with volunteers, too, to help set them up. Uh, Thanks. Do, do, do the best you can. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Any other questions from Council for this group? Okay. Well, thank you guys again, and it is a great uh, festival. I know that it also, I know our youth advisory, some of our uh, uh youth there uh, volunteered out there so uh, gave them an opportunity as well for their bursary so i want to thank you for what you do and uh bringing this event to the community so thanks for coming thank, thank you. you so much thanks for giving us appreciate it You're welcome so council i realize that we have a very full agenda and i noticed that our staff sergeant is waiting very patiently but she is near the end of our agenda so is there any objections to potentially moving uh, staff sergeant's presentation to maybe now and then move forward with the rest of our agenda. I should have caught that beforehand, but is there any objections? Councillor Taylor, okay? Councillor Stasher, okay with that? Okay, so I'm gonna hand it over I'm to- I'm good with that. I'm good with that, Trevor. Okay, I know I do apologize. That's my, I, I, Realized it was such a long one, so I'll, I'm going to hand it over. Move into report into our information item six point one RCMP quarterly report. I'll hand that over to uh, Staff Sergeant Tigerman. Thank you. So I've made a few notes. Um, uh, the one I provided to Council was a report from July or sorry January to August twenty twenty three. So it is an eight month year or eight months of the year report. And the reason why it's not the quarterly report is because I wanted to kind of showcase where we're at in the year. We have um, quite an increase in crime uh, since last year. So we, since last year, we have an 80% increase in break and enters. We have 126% increase in the theft of motor vehicles. And we have a 43% increase of theft under 5,000. Um, I kind of took a look at some of the files and some of the ones that kind of uh, jump out at me are, we have quite a few break and enters into RVs where people are looking for homes or somewhere to stay as well as sheds at vacant lots. Garages seem to be getting hit a bit as well as vacant homes that are uh, not being manned at this time. For theft of motor vehicles, I've noted quite a few dirt bikes, quads, uh, off-highway vehicles being stolen, as well as keys being left in vehicles and vehicles running unattended. Thefts uh, for under 5,000 unlocked vehicles are being rummaged through um, and 
uh, thefts from RVs in parking lots of hotels, unfortunately. So um, what we've done to kind of uh, curb this increase in crime, we have quite a bit of education to the public about looking up, uh, locking up valuables and locking doors and other security related items. I've had a hard time kind of getting this information through media. So I have been going through the town of Hinton for their social media. Uh, I've been working with the hotels to report suspicious people, vehicles, and providing information to their customers about ensuring that things are locked up. Mm. A lot of uh, the hotel parking lots where RVs are being uh, in the parking lots are being hit, uh, as well as working with our courts so that they're aware of this ongoing issue. This is this is an ongoing thing with property related crimes versus persons crimes. And I just noted from 2022 to 2023, we've had an increase of 17 more person crimes, 252 property related crimes, with a total of 250 more criminal code offenses in, in the last year. So upcoming, we do have, I know we set a manpower uh, cap at 17 FTE, which is full-time working members. And that was set in April. I currently have 16 FTE. And the reason for having one less member is that I have a member slated from Parkland, but he is there dealing with critical manpower issues as well. And I'm just waiting for him to get here. I also have three more on transfer in the next month or so, um, which means I have to wait for them to leave the position before I can uh, advocate to get more members here. So that's caused me a bit of issues and um, I will be looking to supplement with the remaining and members at the bigger events in town, as well as looking at some, uh, I basically call it safe city roads, enhancement shifts for traffic enforcement. So that uh, has to do with the two, the two parts uh, crime related. And then Jordan asked me just to kind of touch base on the, uh, the emergency services exercise that we held on August 29th. Uh, quickly go through this. So we had it August 29th at Mountain Nicole School. Those uh, those agencies that we had involved were the RCMP, uh, Hinton Fire, EMS, Hinton Hospital, as well as Grand Yellowhead Public School Division. And we also solicited the assistance of Breakaway Theater for our actors. So the purpose of this exercise was to enact a supplement uh, sublimated uh, incident and provide a coordinated response by all the agencies. We we're able to test and enhance the level of preparation, place, uh, test our communication between the agencies and response capabilities of our emergency services here in Hinton. Um, the results, so we will have an after action report come out, we believe in November from Staff Sergeant Murphy, he'll be putting that all together. But uh, we did have a debrief and there was a couple of things. So partnerships between the agencies were found to be a great asset uh, during this event. All agencies relied on their training, but it was important to work out the kinks uh, that the scenario threw at us. There was a number of things that were worked out, such as our response, but we also identified some gaps, such as communications between the agencies became a big issue. Uh, so the after action report will be prepared. Some of it will be kept confidential and others we will uh, identify the gaps as well as what the solutions are for the gaps. And some information will be released to the public at that time and others will be held in confidentiality. So the report is expected in November. Subject to any questions you may have. Great, thank you, Staff Sergeant. Council, any questions? Uh, Councilor Race and then Councilor Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are you able to um, attribute what is causing this increase in um, criminal code activities? Through the chair to Councillor Race, um, I would believe that there's a number of a number of contributors to the increase in property crime. Uh, I'm going to go with the easiest one, which is education. Uh, I believe here in Hinton. We've had a bit of our guard down and um, the summer has been very busy for the members. We uh, have less manpower on the road, which means less proactive patrols are being made, which means more members are responding to calls and not being able to do our patrols through the neighborhoods. So education for the public is key, uh, more proactive, or sorry, less proactive patrols with members. 
as well as uh, factors that aren't always within our um, realm of, so we have increase in drugs, obviously we know that, and drugs, depending on what they're mixed with, uh, it kind of uh, produces the action that we get. Um, so we are working with AHS in regards to the opiate dependency program. Courts are another uh, uphill battle that we've been dealing with. It's very hard to hold somebody on a property related crime. Um, I guess housing prices are not necessarily housing prices, living, living costs will contribute to this because at times people resort to uh, criminal offenses to get by. So a lot of this is speculation, but I'm gonna take the totality of the situation. I'm gonna say a lot of these factors play. Thank you. Just one one quick follow up. Yes. Would you say the decrease in officers, you know, that, that you um, had officers taken away from your complement, has attributed to this? Through the chair to councillor race, I definitely would say. Um, I'm not saying it's all. Uh, the the result of having less members, but we end up with less members on the road, which means less proactive patrols, less traffic enforcement getting done. Um, and when members, when I only have two members on shift and they have to attend the same call together, I have nobody else making patrols. I have uh, my, my uh, service, it decreases because I have no other members responding to other calls. So the service level decreases, I guess what I'm trying to say as well. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reyes. Councillor Taylor? Yeah, two things, if you don't mind. Um, a week ago, we were talking about uh, traffic congestion on Carmichael and Smith, and we heard from the fire chief uh, safety issues, and he indicated that he didn't have a report from the RCMP on any safety issues that might be on Carmichael or Smith because of traffic congestion. Can you uh, talk to that, please? Uh, uh, Chief, what was that? Uh, through the chair to uh, all of the uh, committee, uh, I didn't have that information at that time, but I, have, I will be having that information for committee the next time they see that line up. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next question. Um, we've recently, or I'm not sure if it's recent, but we have a photo radar site on uh, McKinney and McKechnie and Scobie, which is really close to the Brooker Corner. Can you comment on the um, the accident history of the Brooker Corner and Highway 16? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Taylor, I would have to review pros, uh, our police operation. Uh, data to get that information. Um, it is definitely accessible. I just wouldn't have that information at this time. Uh, could you? Is it possible you can do that? Because this corner, this photo radar site is turning out to be a a uh, half million dollar a year site. So understanding the safety issues related to that corner is pretty important. Yes, I'd be able to get that information to uh, Director of Emergency Services, who would then bring it to Council. Thank you, I appreciate it. I have myself and then Councillor Stashik. Um, just a quick question. Um, at one time we used to speak about, uh, and that was the Staff Sergeant before you yourself, um, a, a tracking system. Are we still utilizing that in our community where we we see where the where the the crime seems to be happening that residents can actually go online and see that is that still happening and is, is there a chance if it is i see you nodding your head a chance for education in the community to where they can go and find that information potentially because i agree with you the education is very key uh, you know, if we're not leaving stuff in our vehicles unlocked and, and gates open and things like that, it deters. But, you know, knowing that that's happening in your neighborhood can really help. But can you speak to that tracking system and, and how they use it? And yeah, where do they go? Yes, I can. Um, I would have to find out the exact name of the 
but it's a crime index mm -hmm. um, and it's available to anybody um, and it's online. I find that I'm having a hard time getting information out into the public mm -hmm. because of the, the social media media uh, kind of um, incident that's been going on. Mm -hmm. So I will try and get that information out through the town of Hinton uh, to through their social media because that's that will be key is education um, to have items removed from vehicles, make sure vehicles are locked. Um, we also have online reporting because a lot of times things don't get reported because they don't think it's important enough, but it drives it back to the crime index because then we will know which areas, we call them hotspots. So if we have uh, influx of crime in a certain area, that gets reported to me and then I can increase proactive patrols in that area mm -hmm. as much as we can. So we do track proactive reports patrols as much as we can and we do use that data so if it's not reported to us then we don't have that data excellent okay thank you councillor sasha that's okay you're okay um i'm going to put myself in queue and i guess and maybe it's more not it's not for a staff sergeant frank of any but i mean uh, to Councillor Taylor's comment about wanting that information and stuff, um, I would see that more as a broader conversation in regards to photo radar. And is that not coming to us in the near future, talking about the future of and things like that? Because I realize Councillor Taylor wants that information or asking for it. I'm not sure if that's the rest of Council and feel the same way about it. So I guess that's where I'm not sure you know, uh, is that coming to us in a future conversation to uh, Chief DeBeaudrap? Uh, through the chair to all the committee, uh, that is affirmed. There, there uh, is a report coming. We have just completed the RFP for uh, board radar services. Uh, we have con our uh, replies back, and uh, a full report will be uh, coming to committee in the relatively near future. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else, uh, Councillor Taylor? Um. Uh, the fire chief trailed off uh, when he was speaking. I couldn't hear him. Could he uh, repeat the last two sentences, please? Mr. Chair, absolutely. Uh, the uh, automatic traffic enforcement or photo radar uh, report will be coming to committee in the relatively near future. A uh, full report on the uh, on the RFP that was uh, sent out, and we've got all the results of that RFP back now. We're just compiling it. Compiling the information for a report for committee. Perfect, thank you. I did have a question. If you... uh, yes, Councilor Taylor. Oh, um, do these uh, do these uh, increases in uh, crime from last year? Is that in part because we're coming out of COVID, or or like if we compared the crime now to pre-COVID? Is it the same or does this represent an increase from even that? Through the chair to Councilor Taylor, I would have to pull the data from previous years, which is available. I would just have to put it together. I believe there's a number of contributors here. And I think uh, like everybody else's professional, it's a fluid thing. Um, as times change, as new drugs are introduced, our, as our our lifestyle changes as well as living costs change, that's where we're going to see the changes. So it may be contributed to COVID. It could be contributed financially from COVID, mental health, um, health issues. We, you name it, we deal with it. So it, it definitely could be attributed to COVID, but uh, there's a number of other factors as well. Thank you. And I, I have myself, I just have one more quick question for you. I heard, a, I guess, a rumor, like, but is it true? But there's a certain period of time where we do not have officers, they're, they're on call. Is that correct? That's correct. So if I may, so because we, we say we're 24-7, but technically we only have people on the streets 21 hours, but there's a period of time where they're on call but they're not actually in the office. Is that correct? That's correct. So as of July, we had to go to a non-watch system and a watch system consists of three separate watches. They're basically three entities. 
and they work the schedule uh, for 24 hour coverage. And just to reiterate, there's always 24 hour coverage. We are always on, on either on shift or on call, which means if you call the police, you're gonna get a police officer. Um, but are we always on shift? No, and that is staggered depending on crime, um, depending on time of day, weekday versus weekend. Uh, but we try, are trying to utilize the amount of members that I have um, in the most proactive way, I guess. Uh, so I guess I use call volume to dictate that. And my call volume is highest, uh, I guess, after school, supper time, everybody's getting home. That is where my call volume is the highest. So therefore, my members are on shift during that time. Um, are we getting the calls late at night? No, but we're also seeing the increase of not. So there is, there's always going to be that give and take, uh, but I believe uh, uh, to have the three watch systems, I need 15 members total on shift. So I can't have anybody on medical leave. I can't have anybody on, um, we call it uh, GRW, which has graduated back to work. I can't have anybody on that in order to make that system work. And I don't have that at this time. So if I may follow up then, is this as a this change? Is this something new, and a result of the decision of council a while back in reducing or not? So I'd say reducing, but keeping it at seventeen members, or is this something that we've always uh, practiced? Well, at the time in the spring when we were running at nineteen members in a perfect world, we we're actually running at a vote because we always have those medical pat leaves and that comes from my 19 numbers. So although on paper it was 19 num and many 18 members, we would be running at 17 or 18. And the other time maybe we were running at 20, but it always kind of worked out. So now that we're at 17, the fact that I'm actually running at 15, 16 members actually makes sense and I can't make a three watch system work with 19 members. And things are unpredictable in the sorry, 17. It's uh, it's unpredictable. I, I can't uh, say when somebody's gonna be having a baby or go off medical, that sort of thing. So it really, it's a fluid little, uh, I don't know, system that I have to work. And as we go along, I'll have to, supplement with either um, extra shifts for the members to work for traffic enforcement in order to reach our goals, in order to make sure that uh, that the residents in Hinton feel safe. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Council, any other? Oh, uh, just uh, one quick follow-up. Uh, there is a link to that uh, interactive data map on our, on the town's website. It'll take you externally to the web RCMP's website, uh, but we do have that link built into our website. Excellent, thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Appreciate that. All right, Council, any other questions for Staff Sergeant? Your report? All right, well, thank you for your flexibility, Council, and thank you for waiting. So, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you, you for having me. That's right. Excellent. Okay, council. Um, tell you what, let's take a five minute break and then we will reconvene with our reports from the administration after five minutes. <laughs>